2019 marks the bicentennial of Singapore's founding as a British trade settlement. Raffles chose Singapore due to its strategic position at the southern end of the Malacca Straits and its excellent natural harbour. However, we know that Singapore was settled at least twice prior to 1819. Hence, if geography is destiny, it is sometimes said, and Singapore's strategic value due to its geographical position is an immutable fact, why were these settlements later abandoned? The pre-1819 settlements in Singapore prospered during cycles of globalisation when China was open and maritime trade with it flourished. Correspondingly, they went into decline and were eventually abandoned as China closed itself from the outside world. At the same time, due to changing monsoon patterns, the Portuguese and Dutch decided to ditch the Singapore Straits in favour of other regional maritime routes. Besides the external environment, the actions of influential individuals on the spot were also pivotal in shaping Singapore's historical development. Policy makers with different preferences and varying bargaining powers would negotiate with one another till a position is reached. In the case of Singapore, the pre-colonial Malay elites, the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British and even the political elites at the time of independence shaped the island's strategic importance. They had to take into account external constraints and their internal dynamics when making decisions. Three defining moments helped determine Singapore's strategic importance after 1819. The first was the period between 1819 and 1824. Although the island was not the first choice for the East India Company for a trading settlement, a compromise was later reached between the British and the Dutch. They eventually divided up their spheres of influence in the region and swapped possessions along the Malacca and Singapore streets. Another major defining event was the debate within the British cabinet in 1920 over whether to build a naval base on the island. Elites in the colony had been pressuring London to improve Singapore's coastal defences since the 1880s and the increased Japanese naval power after World War I provided fresh impetus. However, its high costs and London's tight coffers slowed the base's construction. The base was finally completed in 1938. Finally, London's decision to separate Singapore from the rest of Malaya in its post-World War II political reconfiguration was also hotly debated within the colonial office. The British still needed the island to base its regional forces and also allay Malay concerns of being overwhelmed by a predominantly Chinese city. A compromise was later achieved when it was agreed that the separation would only be temporary. These three defining moments remind us that Singapore is very much affected by external developments. It remains so today, with tensions over international trade and globalisation, as well as challenges in security. But geography alone is not destiny. Determined action by the men and women on the spot matters. Hence, whether modern Singapore can withstand the challenges of the future very much depends on the wit, determination and unity of its people and its leaders.